Some species are so important to an ecosystem that if it was removed, the entire ecosystem would be drastically changed. This is what's called a keystone species, and the American chestnut right here is one such species. Hi, I'm Ranger Pete here in Shenandoah National Park, and until recently, the American chestnut was one of the most common species in the Appalachian region. As many as one in four trees was an American chestnut. This tree is most recognizable by its long spearhead shaped leaves with these pointed serrations run, running along the edges. It could grow to be over 100 feet tall and over 10 feet wide, but today the American chestnut is only going to be found around a couple feet high to maybe 10 to 20 feet tall. This one right here is about as big as they get. The American chestnut was incredibly ecologically significant. As you can probably tell by the name, the chestnut produced a lot of nuts, or mast. Many species, like bear and deer, relied on these nuts as they were fattening up for the winter. Another aspect of the American chestnut was its cultural significance. Just as animals relied on the American chestnut for its mast, people did as well. People often planted them nearby their farm, and they'd allow their livestock, like cows, and pigs to forage through the forests when the, when the nuts were ripe. People living in rural areas didn't necessarily have much money, so they could use the nuts as part of a barter economy. And also the wood provided an excellent building material when building their homes and barns. This human scale can be expanded to a scale of national economic significance. What made the chestnut so valuable was its range of utility. Perhaps the two most common uses for trees are for food, like with peaches and pears, or as a building material, like pine and spruce. The chestnut provided food and building materials to a superlative degree. It was unique in that it could produce huge quantities of food that would be exported to major cities, as well as provide extremely high quality, weather resistant, easy to split lumber that was perfect for use in constructing buildings, split rail fences, and railroad ties. Few trees have the same degree of utility as the American chestnut. It was a nearly perfect tree. So what could have happened to this beautiful tree that was so important to its natural ecosystem and to people living here for thousands of years? What could have caused a species to go from one of the mo most abundant tree species in the region to becoming critically endangered in barely 40 years? Its decline began in 1904 when a, when a fungus called Cryphonectria parasitica, or chestnut blight, was introduced to the, to the United States from Asia. This is a fungus for which the chestnut has no natural defense. Right here you can see an active case of chestnut blight. You can see how the fungal infection has caused the bark to split and the wood is rotting. And here you can see the orange fruiting bodies of the fungus itself. It's this fungus right here that caused the death of four billion chestnut trees less than a hundred years ago. Faced with the reality of a seemingly unstoppable blight on these hugely important trees, what was the response of the various land managers and stakeholders of the day? What would you do if something so important to your livelihood was all of a sudden devastated by an unstoppable blight? Really all that could be done was to cut down and bulldoze as many trees as possible. This was done as an attempt to stop or slow the spread of the fungus and to harvest and salvage as much of this incredibly valuable resource as possible before the remaining timber rotted in the woods. Now you must be wondering, if all these trees were killed, how am I standing here today surrounded by them? The chestnut can actually still be found today throughout much of its original range. Why is that? It turns out that the part of the tree affected by the blight is the part above ground, which means the root system goes unharmed and new stems can grow, grow up from old roots. Wherever you find a chestnut tree today, there was a large, mature one in, on that same spot over 100 years ago. This function of new stems from old roots is one of the only things keeping the chestnut from going extinct. The problem is 
that while young saplings are unaffected, once they reach a certain size, they become susceptible to the blight, which is usually introduced through some damage, however small, to the bark. Shortly after becoming infected, the new stem dies, and if lucky, a new one begins to grow. The result is seeing these small stems growing up along the dead predecessors in some places. Where there's one, there are usually a few of them. Its cultural significance today is largely historical in nature. The tree can be seen in many old his historic photographs, and the wood is still in many old buildings. You know that song about chestnuts roasting in an open fire? How many of us have ever actually roasted chestnuts in an open fire? I'm here in Big Meadows Lodge, a historic site in Shenandoah National Park. And around me, you can see a lot of American chestnut that was used in the construction of this building. And here you can see holes that worms bore through the wood before it could be harvested. This chestnut wood can still be found all around the park in places like the historic Corbin Cabin, Massanutten Lodge, and in our own headquarters building. It can really be found in many historic buildings throughout the eastern United States. And it stands as a symbol of a different time in our history an essential part of Americana that is, for now at least, largely gone. The economic significance is fairly limited as well. Perhaps its greatest value is in its desirability as a reclaimed wood for use in woodworking. In the meantime, what has happened to Shenandoah's ecosystem since losing almost all this keystone species? Looking into this question, we actually find a silver lining, biodiversity. A strong ecosystem, like the one here in Shenandoah, finds its strength in diversity. There are over a thousand species of vascular plants here and hundreds of animal species, not to mention all kinds of life like fungi, lichens, and slime molds. If there was only one type of tree here in Shenandoah, our forest would be a weak monoculture. And if that one type was the chestnut, it would have been wiped out by the blight. But with over a hundred different tree species here in Shenandoah, many others were able to fill certain roles for the chestnut. We love our parks because we feel at home here. This is where we come to become adventurers and artists and philosophers. And we leave feeling re rejuvenated and inspired and full of awe. And we think about all of the things that nature gives us. But at the same time, we must think about the impacts that we have on nature itself. Our connection with nature is so incredibly important. It's something that we must reinforce continually. And that can begin here.